Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Lord of Salt Herugrim playing Bloodborne. So here today in Mr. Grimm's neighborhood, we visit Lower Yarnum again. Uh, if you followed from the last stream, I had just beaten the second hunter. There were two hunters here uh, when we entered Lower Yarnum and took care of the first guy on the machine gun after exploring for a bit. And then after a lot of trouble, we took care of the second hunter. Now here I'm showing a secret area that I missed. It's not really a secret. I would have found it if I was better at looking around the first time. But, you know how it goes. Uh, it's right next to the crows in that area where we fought the second. The regular hunter, after killing the guy on the machine gun. Uh, it's a big tower with some good items in here. But first we're going to have a few enemies to deal with. Uh, a few of these beasties. Now these beast types are um, patients. They were experimented on. I believe they're called test subjects. But these ones with the cloaks on them are females. They can poison you course and they wear the sheets on their head so the fire doesn't bother them. These are the male ones. Uh, they are afraid of fire so if they see your torch they'll recoil a bit. Of course they are all weak to fire to some extent as well as to your saw weapon. So if you have the saw cleaver or the saw spear you're in pretty good shape for pretty much this whole area. Nothing but beasts and uh, some crows. So, so animal types. We got a few left here. I got lucky there. They cornered me a little bit. But I was able to get through it without too much trouble. And here comes the last female. Use my hunter's torch to wear her down. She got a hit in. A little bit of poison. But not too bad. And I decided to go in here for the kill. I missed. A little embarrassing. She got me again. But not that time. <laughs> not the cleanest kill, but it did the job. Alright, so this is the first area that I missed on my first video of the stream. Uh, pretty easy to miss. If you don't know about it, you can fall off the right side. But also, if we climb up through it, you'll see where we come out. And I always try to remember to light my little hip lantern. A little extra light. Also, frees up your hands. Technically, I could bring my gun back out if I wanted. Okay, first item we got here. Another stone. Okay, climb up the stairs. There's two floors to this place. I apologize for background noise, but I can't. This is actually my second time recording over this because I hit the wrong button. So that was awesome. <laughs> okay, so you climb up here, and here you'll get the uh, spear, the shotgun spear, whatever it's called, gun spear. Uh, probably would be a useful weapon, and this is a strength-based weapon, so I'm not going to use it. Here's some lore about how them, how they had to burn the whole lower yarn down to contain the plague. Um, and here we've got the charred hunter set, which is, uh, good against fire. So, unfortunately, there's not a lot of fire-based enemies in Bloodborne, but there is one chalice dungeon where it's useful. <laughs> so, here we'll light that guy up first. And so, yeah, we came out on the other side here. What this is, is, uh... And this beast man was actually one of the ones that attacked me when I was fighting the hunter. It was very irritating. But, um, that's where we come up out of this place. So if I had just checked over here, it's over to the left side. To the right side is where the shortcut is of the this area, which is where we fought the hunter on the ground. Probably would have been a good idea to clear those areas out before fighting the hunter. But, uh... You know, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Alright. So I just wanted to kill this guy because I just, I didn't want to take the chance. So I wanted to look over there and make sure there was no other items. There wasn't. Um, just collect this thing off the crow. All I did was drop back down and then climb back up. Um, see, so yeah, we cleared out over half of this place already. We did uh, these upper area, this rooftop section here. We did uh, the outskirts around. There's two paths that lead up to this spot, and here's the shortcut that I unlocked at the end of the stream. Uh, this takes us to the back end of the, the bottom of the church, as it were, so we can skip the whole church again. Very nice. Um, and we come out. What is technically lower, this is the bottom of Lower Yard, and we're at now. This is street level, uh, before we were climbing around on rooftops, so that's good to know. 
We did the, like I said, we did the upper parts of Lower Yarnum. There's two paths that lead up to that central area where the two hunters are. And then you deal with the two hunters and you infiltrate the church, which is, comes right out down here. And the church is where they had a large, very large blood star beast hung up, which they used to make the ritual blood. Uh, the chalice for the ritual blood is being protected by the other blood star beast who we're going to go looking for now. So we're, on, we're at street level now at Lower Yardum. Um, not a very pleasant looking place, but a pretty simple one. There's really only one path through here. Uh, there's some ambushes set up, some traps. Of course, plenty of enemies waiting just in the fog and stuff. Give you a hard time. But, that's the Bloodborne for you. It drives me nuts when they jump back like that, because if they get to hit him like this guy does, and uh, then he jumps back, and I can't get him to get to reclaim that most of that health. You know, So they, they get you like that. That's pretty tricky of them. You know, so get that sneak attack in and then back off so you can't rally, you know, regain your health. But it's pretty simple from here on in. You just run forward. There's, there's not much else to do. Again, I apologize for the background noise, but it's very warm here today. And I already, like I said, recorded this uh, half hour long commentary and then lost it, so... I don't want to sit here in the hot air, sweating my nuts off for no reason. So we got two more big werewolves here, uh, so they're going to come after us. Probably would have been worth using fire paper, but I didn't have any set. <laughs> so I was getting a little worried. I mean, I do have an upgraded saw spear, and of course I, I pretty much know what I'm doing at this point. Uh, the torch also helps for fighting these guys. But... <laughs> They still manage to get the first hit. This guy grabbed me. When they grab you, just keep mashing the shoulder buttons, L1 and R1, and you'll get out quicker that way. Whereas, if you press nothing, he basically would have killed me if I didn't do anything. So, I'm trying to get away to use the health, and of course he hits me anyway. So these two are doing quite the number on me. Two werewolves at once is tricky, even when you know what you're doing in this game. So I killed the one. The other one's coming for revenge. And, uh... But I settled it there. Got kind of lucky. Uh, they didn't get any more hits off, but um, such is as it is. Okay. So I, it's hard to get items off them too, because their mass is so big. Like you have to step inside them. So that's the way to keep moving forward. This is a bit of a dead end for now, but I always check that end because there's always something there. You know, something worth collecting. And here we get another goodie. And of course, a door that we can't open from this side, naturally. This is, after all, a FromSoft game. <laughs> so, yeah, next time I stream this game should be, I want to say, Sunday night. Maybe. I say maybe because there's a football game on Sunday night. So, I might not be available. <laughs> I used to rely on my dad to keep track of the football scores for me, but obviously I can't anymore, so. And uh, Monday night's a no-go because I'm at work. So at this point, I know that there's another ambush coming, so I figure I might as well at least get some fire paper ready. You know, and some other stuff so I'm ready for the boss. Because the plan is uh, there's one more shortcut to unlock, and then it's pretty much a straight shot to the boss. So once I get all that done, we're good. Got my fire tape now. Figure, let's put it right on. There you go, fiery weapon. Shala. And he's gonna come out of here, and he's gonna get me anyway, because <laughs> I didn't know how close I had to get to trigger that. But uh, so that's another big werewolf down. Only three hits with uh, fire paper on, which isn't bad. And there's another werewolf um, at the end of this road. Who's uh, waiting to ambush you? But if you're careful, he, uh, he won't get you. There's a screamer there. I didn't find him, but he did alert the werewolf to me, so that was unfortunate, but it happens. And the screamer is, there's a little alley uh, behind the door there. That's where the screamer's hiding, but I didn't notice it, so I let him go. But I do want to head back and go up that that door that the werewolf broke earlier. 
that building is a shortcut, an extremely useful shortcut. I thought it was this one. It's not. It's down a little more. But, <coughs> excuse me, that's the idea. We're going to take the shortcut back up. Because I got a lot of souls now. And a lot of echoes. And this guy snuck up on me, the bugger. He's the one that was screaming earlier. So he finally caught up to us. I should say she, these are the female patients. And, um, yeah, we took care of her. And we'll head in here for the shortcut. Now there's another beast man just inside. He's off to the left. Not in this room, but the next. He'll be waiting for us. There he comes. Got lucky there. And I'm going to go ahead and clear this tower. There's not much in here. But, of course, it's an extremely useful shortcut. So make sure you check this out. You're going to be using this a lot. Unless you can, unless you can kill that Bloodstar beast in one run, you're going to need this shortcut. And thank God for it, too. <laughs> And again, the center sections are broken, so you can take a shortcut by falling down those, if you want. Okay, and I walked right past the, the balcony here. Here's another item. Gotta make sure to get all the goodies. And there's a beast here. He's already startled by all the flames I have, which is fine, because he's dead. I didn't drop anything for us. So next level up should be the shortcut. There it is. You open it from this side. And I will show you guys where that is, but first I'm going to finish clearing this place. I don't want to miss anything. you got to be careful with FromSoft. They stick stuff in weird corners sometimes. So I go the rest of the way up to collect the final item. There we go, some more fire paper. Not too shabby. Alright, I'm going to go down just one level. And take the shortcut entrance out. This is the first area I explored on my stream. It's off when you first enter Lower Yarnum, it's off to the right. So you'll see where it is when we go back up. So I'm going to go back up because, like I said, I got a lot of souls. I want to cash them in. We're going to level up. We're going to fix up our gear. And luckily, this is a nice, easy, breezy way. There's no enemies here. Uh, good times, good times. So that's the plan going forward. Level up. And then it's a clear shot from this shortcut down to where the, the beast is. The Blood Star Beast. So it's not going to be a long trip from here. There's, there's really not nearly as much to Lower Yarnum as there was to Central Yarnum. You know, it took me a lot of videos just to get through Central Yarnum. And, um, and that's a Wandering Horror or a Lost Nightmare, whatever they call it. I think they call it a Wandering Nightmare. But those are like the uh, jewel bugs or whatever they're called from Dark Souls and Demon Souls. You kill them and you get a, a shiny material, a good material for crafting or upgrading. And it's the same in Bloodborne. Only they're little squishy blobs instead of critters. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get him this time. He got away from me, which is fine. You can always, if they get away, you can exit and uh, exit the game and reload. And if you're right where he spawns, he'll spawn right in front of you. And you can take him out easy. So, good thing to know next time uh, if you're having trouble with those things. It was the same in Dark Souls as well. Okay, so we climbed, excuse me, climbed the tower. And uh, we're back up at the starting area, which is nice. You can head right into the lantern. And head back to the Hunter's Dream. And I'll do the upgrades, and I went ahead and skipped this part because it's not all that interesting. It's just me running around upgrading stuff. Okay. So we're back in Lower Yarnum now. And we're going to head straight for the boss this time. Not Nothing else to mess around with. Now we do have our Wandering Nightmare friend. Lost Nightmare. He almost disappeared on us, but I got him at the last second. Okay, I got another stone off him. Very good. Okay, and we drop down the houses like we did the very first time I played this area. Only now we actually know what we're doing. Dropping down, dropping down, dropping down. With all that dropping, we're not done dropping yet. We gotta drop down some more. Here's the balcony. I figured kill this guy, a few extra blood echoes. Maybe an item. Not so lucky, that's okay. I, I mainly didn't wanted to make sure he didn't follow me down and give me grief. If we just skip to the bottom. Okay, there's nothing down here except for the one beast patient who's waiting for me to ambush. But uh, luckily he went on the defensive instead. 
and got himself clobbered. So that didn't work for him. And right out of here, the same werewolf that jumped through this door is just hanging out in front of the place now. Uh, he's looking away. Technically, you could run past him and he'd never know, but I figured, hey, why not bust out some fire paper and make short work of him. So I did. Uh, went the same way over here. Now, past that fog there, that's where that screamer is. He's going to go ahead and let the werewolf in front of us know that we're here. But we've still got the fire paper on the sword, so no problems there. Goes down very easy to a saw spear plus three wrapped in fire paper and imbued with some uh, blood, some stones to make it stronger. So like I said, there's really only one way to go. You can poke around a little bit, but you're not going to find much. There's not much behind these statues or anything. So you just head back, and you're going to take this set of stairs. Now there's another wandering nightmare here, but he didn't show up for me for some reason. He must have already split. And we are now in the area immediately in front of the Bloodstar Beast. So first I'm going to go ahead and collect the items and kill the female beast patients that are hiding out in the fields here. Uh, they're guarding over the items. Here's the first one. Oh, she managed to poison me a little bit. But I got her in the end. Okay. I'm still looking for the item. Hadn't seen it. But uh, it's just over on the other side. There you can see it. Hidden behind this wall. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the other side. And there's another. Here she is. Female beast patient. Take her down, and there's the item. So I grab the item. Already lost where the female beach patient was, but there's nothing popping up there. So first time I figured we'll take a quick look here. Back up at the entrance, you can see that red light there. That's where you summon Albert, so he can help you if you want. Uh, it does cost insight to summon someone. But then I went ahead and said, all right, let's do it. <coughs> do it to it. I figured the first fight... I would go straight in and just fight the old-fashioned way, see how it goes, and develop a strategy from there. So right now I'm just fighting basic, you know, trying to keep track of the thing. Uh, this Bloodstar Beast has a dash attack where she'll jump, you know, out of sight and you'll lose your lock-on, which is a real pain in the neck. But other than that, I'm just fighting in melee, using dash out, and uh, waiting for stamina to recharge. It's pretty much the only strategy I'm employing here. Tried using the expanded weapon, but it didn't work out, so I'm not going to use that too much. The full saw spear is a little too slow, you know, so unless you got a, a really good hit in, it's probably not much use in using it, unfortunately. But at least uh, it still does fine on its own. Yeah, that's the only strategy I'm using here. It's working pretty well. She's got a pretty nasty frenzy attack, as you see there. But it's you can dodge it, so as long as you be careful. Uh, she's got pretty good tells for all of her attacks. It's only when you get carried away there like I did, and I got poisoned without knowing it. So I gotta back off, which is difficult. She likes to close in on you. And I keep hitting the wrong button, too, so that's no good. There we go. Got the poison taken care of, got my health back, and I went in back for some more rounds of close combat. Pretty standard stuff. Now she's in her final phase now, so she's constantly spewing poison, so just getting close enough to attack her is dangerous. But uh, unfortunately, you can't keep your distance indefinitely, you know, you gotta get in there. And uh, she killed me with her frenzy attack, which she's still doing because it's so wild. And it is a pretty wild attack, so that was my first experimental battle. This time I was like, alright, now we're busting out the big guns. First we'll summon Albert. Okay, we've got all our gear, we've got fire tape, we've got molotovs, and we got the blood cocktails as well. And I also have my fire sprayer, my flamethrower as it were. Which is also a very effective weapon against her. Like I said, the beasts are weak to fire and to saws, so I got a saw spear got the fly fire sprayer so we've got all our weaknesses covered and I got some fire tape on my saw spear so 
so can't get much more well equipped than this. Uh, I was throwing everything in the fence. Now, if you're not, if you're wondering what the blood st starved beast is, uh, this is a beast that's mutated obviously further than even the larger werewolves. Um, and the reason why it looks so funny is it's because, see, there I threw a pungent cock blood cocktail, and the blood starved beast can't resist it. She's got to go for it. But because I brought Albert along, and I did manage to get a visceral anyway. Because I brought Albert along, he complicated it by attacking her. While she, because she'll ignore you and go for that blood. But because he was there, that canceled that out pretty much. I mean, I got lucky that time; it still worked. But, and it'll. And the pungent cocktails—they only work in the early stages here. Uh, she's gonna try to walk over to it again, but once again, Albert cancels her out of it. I tried to use the same strategy, but it wasn't good. So that's your first lesson, folks. Uh, don't try to throw everything at it at once. Um, either use Albert or use the pungent blood. And what I found out later as well was that the blood only works in her first stage. When she goes into the second stage here, and of course the third, she just ignores it. So like, I'm going to throw another one. She's not even going to try. She's just going to try to murder Albert. So we're going to have to come back and help him fight her. And that's the end of the using the blood. And I wasted three of them. And this. If I had gone in by myself with the, the blood, I could have used it and probably spammed her most of the way to death. But uh, it, it's technically a good follow-up. Like, if you want to stick to Albert, you can have the blood cocktails as a backup, you know. And there I used the Molotov, which is very difficult to hit her with. But I got lucky there. We almost killed her. She got into her third stage, uh, went into a frenzy attack, and is doing got me before I had a chance to even heal. She was focused on me, her frenzy did a lot of damage, when I backed off, she came for me. I probably should have focused on dodging instead, but, you know, <laughs> such is as it is. Here's attempt number two. I've learned my first lesson, I'm not going to waste uh, blood cocktails on her, but I did use a Molotov. But as I was saying, the blood star Beast is a large beast who has been subjected to a bloodletting ceremony. That's why it's been all carved up, and it, it, the skin from its back is actually hanging off its head. Uh, and that's all part of bloodletting. So basically, they've been the experiments they've been doing on these beasts down here uh, before they charred the place, burnt it down, was they were trying to use the beast blood in place of the old blood for the same benefit. So these two blood-starved beasts were subjected to this ceremony and uh, experimented on for this purpose along with the others. Now she managed to get me that time I was trying to spray her. She got me with the frenzy attack and it was too much for me. So I went down. Here is my final attempt at the first night. At this point uh, my resources are getting a little low but I've still got just enough to make another honest attempt. So we hit her first with the Molotov. I, try, I hit her with another one. Kind of got lucky. The original plan was to let Albert engage her while I hit her with Molotovs. But she, then she started going after me, so I used fire tape to defend myself, which I almost failed to do. Luckily, Albert was there to distract her so that I could heal. Because you can't let this thing hit you. It does good damage. But um, it's also pretty easy to dodge if you're focused on it. So you lose track of her like that, she uses that dash attack. She's like a freight train. Just shoots yourself all the way across the hall. And uh, you will lose lock on when that happens, which is unfortunate. But that's the way that works. So we've already got her to stage two again. Um, and now she is in complete frenzy. We'll ignore any blood around. And at this point I'm just letting Albert distract her while I try to come in with the fire tape from behind. I know not to bother with the pungent blood anymore. We also got to be careful of the poison, so I back off for that. She's doing a number on Albert, so I figured I better get in there and help out. And that frenzy attack has some crazy reach. But as long as you know it's coming and you're prepared for it. Now she's in stage three, so things are gonna get sticky. And here I'm poisoned, and she did her frenzy attack, the combination of which was too much for me. So I succumbed. That was how I ended the night. Uh, without knowing it, I was out of insight. I actually used all of my madman's knowledge in between. Before I did this video, I did some farming. And, uh, between days. So here's day two, after farming, because I had to resupply my bullets and whatnot. I 
failed to throw the cocktail originally. But at this point, the strategy is more or less the same, to sit back and let Albert take the punishment. And I tried to hit her with a Molotov. I'll try a couple more times before they all miss. Uh, when she's engaging Albert, she's not going to stand still long enough for the damn cocktails to actually hit her. So, it's tricky business trying to use that. Make sure you get plenty of distance because of that charge attack. Tried to get a, almost got a visceral in there, but it didn't work. That's fine, we did good damage. Tried another Molotov. At this point I realized the Molotovs are pointless. I'm never going to hit her. She's too worked up. She's all over the place. And Albert's keeping her too busy. So, I have no fire tape left. Wasted one more cocktail and that was the last <coughs> Excuse me, that I'd be wasting. I'm out of fire tape. I'm out of... I have some bl pungent blood. But as you would see... I believe later this fight, the because the plan was when Alfred died, I would try the pungent blood again. But you guys will see what happens when I try that. Wasn't a good idea. The bottom line is when, you, like I said earlier, when you go into the fight, either use the pungent blood or use Albert. Pick one or the other. If you want to use Albert, if you got the insight, if you're out of insight, then use the pungent blood. And here I switched to the fire sprayer. I really wanted to do as much as I could with the fire sprayer. It does do a lot of damage very quickly, but because she's moving around so much, it's hard to actually focus it on her. And you do go through your bullets pretty quickly using the fire sprayer. So right now, Albert's getting hit pretty good. Still hanging in there, though. Rolling a lot to avoid the damage. Albert knows what he's doing. So here I go with the fire sprayer again, trying to keep mobile. That also helps keep the lock on. Racking up a lot of damage. 700 damage. Uh, using the fire sprayer there. And now she's got me in a grab. And she's instantly poisoned me. And the damage with the poison was too much. And it killed me. So that was a bummer. <laughs> and here I go. This is actually the final attempt. Uh, the one that will be successful. Uh, I'm out of fire tape. I know cocktails don't work. So I'm pretty much just... Fight it the old-fashioned way, like I did the first time around, but this time I got Albert with me. You know, so I keep it simple, and uh, and it wound up working for me. So far, that's been my experience with the bosses in this game. That you're probably better off fighting them straight up sometimes than trying to use the tricks, or at least I am. That's where I have the most luck. Um... Because once you get in that tempo where you're good at dodging them, they're going to get easier anyway. So it's nice to have tricks, but I wasted all my tricks the first time and that was a mistake. I should have gone in, I shouldn't have wasted the pungent blood. Not that I'll probably need it again. Um, though I don't know for sure, it might work on werewolves and stuff as well. Excuse me. Um... And that's pretty much it. It's just me and Albert pounding away on her. She's into her second phase now where she'll spray us occasionally with poison. And there's no other strategies here. There's no Molotov. Uh, pungent blood I would try to use again, but it would be a waste. So I settled for, okay, you know, hit her with the fire sprayer sometimes. And just go straight at her the others, you know. And now I'm poisoned, so I'm cycling through my stuff trying to get the right one. I hit the wrong button, gave myself some blood bullets. And now I finally got the antidote. A couple heals in. And we're back to business. Just in time, as Albert has passed into the old oblivion. And it's just us in this crazed, blood-soaked beast. Blood-carved... Blood-starved beast, excuse me. Everything's bloody in this game. He's almost got me. She's almost got me poisoned again. I'm just trying to back up while the poison meter runs down for a bit. And I tried to throw the blood, but as you can see, she kind of runs in a circle for a bit. Like, it almost works, but she's still going crazy. So it's clear that the, the pungent blood's not supposed to be used uh, for this phase. It's not nearly as effective as it was in the first. So in the end, it's up to you. Um, I do recommend using Fire Sprayer with... Uh, you can actually use the Bone Meal, I believe it's called. Or the Bone Mesh, whatever we got from when we killed the Hunter. 
uh, he dropped some bone mesh for us. And that actually is an upgrade for your gun. Similar to fire tape is to the melee, uh, the bone mesh is to bullets. So in this case, our fire sprayer. So if I had used it, and I did at one point, I believe in this fight. If I haven't done it already yet, I've done it before. I don't think I did it yet, actually. But the fire sprayer is extremely effective with the bone mesh. As long as you manage to keep on top of her. Yeah, at this point I'm just hacking away at her, trying to get her down and to win, basically. Now she's in her final phase. She's actually gonna sit back there a bit. This would have been a good time to hit her with a cocktail or something. Or some oil. You can hit them with oil and then use the fire sprayer. I tried using the fire sprayer straight up, it didn't work so well. Managed to stay out of range of her attack. And used another healing item. Back to using the fire. Now this is an upgraded fire sprayer plus three. Um, I didn't use, like I said, the bone meal on it, unfortunately. Now I'm rolling away because I'm poisoned. So I have to keep the distance and use a antidote, which I clicked off of by accident, and then try to heal myself so that I'm ready to get back in there. <laughs> A lot of stuff you have to think of. I tried using the fire sprayer too far away to be effective. But she does her area of effect again. And her frenzy attack. It does quite a number on me. I figured at this point use the last of the fire sprayer. And I remembered my bone meal. I'm also poison. So I healed. And back to using the fire sprayer. And I saw my blood echoes, but I didn't even care. Just kept fighting. He poisoned me again, but this time I remembered what to do and did it right. I tried to hit her with the hard, heavy attack, but obviously I was too far. To get her area of effect again. I'm poisoned again. But I'm on top of it now. I know what I'm doing. And she's almost done. So at this point I'm getting a little over anxious. I'm just trying to get in there. I just kill the dang thing, and so I'm overextending myself, but it got the job done. Alright, so that was the Blood Starved Beast. Okay, job done. Uh, there's one more item to collect in here, and then we're all wrapped up for this video. So this is Herogram. I hope you guys enjoyed this little romp through Bloodborne and Lower Yardum. I retrieved my Blood Echoes, lighted the lantern, and collected the last item. So until then, I'll see you guys next time, next stream. I'll be taking on uh, the chapel, the main chapel. So that's going to be fun. Until then, this is the Lord of Salt signing off. I'll see you guys later. Take it easy.